Hello, it's uh, Zelly here, and I'm going to teach you guys basic input-output via a light switch. So, we're going to create a light switch today to teach you input-output. Now, the first thing we're going to want to do is, I'm going to hurry and edit this light over here. The light switch that's going to be used will be this one in the far room in Zelly Clipping. And so, go ahead and go into the properties, and for the name, I'm going to name it, wait, I don't want a name, sorry, and brightness. We're gonna go ahead and change it. It was originally 200, but I this is my second recording of the tutorial because I accidentally forgot to hit the record button. Um, yeah. So, anyways, the name for the name we want. Um, I'm actually gonna name it. You usually don't want to name your lights because it won't create light bounces, which is when a, when a light is projected onto a texture. According to the texture's properties, light will bounce off of it just like real life which is one of the benefits of Source because most um, engines use dynamic lighting and only a very few engines, if any, have dynamic lighting. That bounces as well. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and name it. Um, I'm going to name it just Light. Um, light Entity. Light underscore Entity. And apply it. Another, th well, another thing we're going to want to do is we're going to copy this to the other light so we can see the effects of no light bounces. So go ahead and go into the other property after copying it. So copy it from the, well, I think you know what I meant, and then paste it. So, oh, let's go ahead and get rid of this name, too. Okay, that's good. Now, we're going to want to put a button. I'm going to put it right here next to the doorway, because that's usually where they're in real life. So I went ahead and selected the block tool, and let's create a brush. Um, um, I'm going to make mine four units, like, I guess, width or something, um, and eight units length and two units, like, thick, if that makes sense. Now, uh, make sure you have, now, go into the, for the texture, type in button. Uh, we're going to use this texture, this button texture. Now select the light switch and select fit. That will make it automatically like stretch itself or shrink itself to fit the texture. Alright good, we got a nice button here. Now go ahead and control T or right click. Uh, never mind about the right click. Uh, control T and we're gonna, uh, and that turns the brush into a brush-based entity, which means it's an entity that uses brushes for things like triggers that you walk through, and in our case, buttons. So we got funk button, we got funk detail. Change that to funk button, and hit apply. Now we've got these settings that we want to change a few of them. Firstly, I'm gonna name it light underscore button or, well, button switch, doesn't really matter. Um, and then we're going to want to select um, sounds. I'm going to change the sound to a, should be a light switch sound somewhere around here. Yes, here we go. Apply it, and the delay before reset. Basically, this means when you uh, push the button, it'll be that many seconds until you can push it again. So, for our example, or for how it is right now, it'll be once you push, it'll be three seconds before you can push it again. But since it's a light switch, you want to be able to like hit as many times in a row without a delay. So we're gonna change this to zero. So now you can just keep pushing it. Um. All right, that's all we really need to choose, select or whatever. Now go into outputs. This little outputs tab at the top, and select, and hit add. All right. Now, outputs are basically means it the entity sends it to another entity to do something. For this, ex for now, for this example, what it's going to do is once you push the button, it's going to tell the light to turn off and back on, like toggle. In between, off, and on and off. All right. So my output named. What this means is when you do something specific with that entity, it will cause the output to happen. So for this example, we're going to do on pressed. So once we push the button, it happens. 
Now target entity is named. We're going to want to choose our light entity, our whatever you named your light. And what that means is on pressed, we're going to send a command to light entity. And this via this input is what it's going to do. We're going to choose toggle. There is like toggle, turn on and off. But toggle turns it on and off depending on what it is. So if it's on, it'll turn it off, and if it's off, it'll turn it on. Now, with the parameter override of, we don't need to worry about that with this input. And after delay of sec in seconds of, that basically means if we push it, it'll wait until, like, if we put 5 here, it would wait 5 seconds later and push the button. We don't want that, so we're just going to use 0. And fire once only means once we push the button, it does the output and it won't do it again, which we don't want. So just go ahead and hit apply and cancel. Okay, now you can see what inputs are applied to it, uh, applied to an entity by going to the entity, or in this example the light, and hitting alt enter, and selecting the inputs tab. So it says light button on press toggle, so it tells you the same output. Um, okay, so hit apply cancel. Now I'm going to go ahead and, oh wait, I forgot something. Go to your button real quick, and go into the properties, and go to the flags tab. These are a bunch of things that you can tick or untick. So like don't move, we want that ticked. So like when you push it, it won't like press in. It'll just stay there, which is better than like indenting into the wall all the way or something. Now use activates, make sure that's ticked. Um, you don't really want t touch activates because it's kind of annoying that you have to keep like, if that, that'd be if you wanted to like run into the button, which would make sense if you were making like a pressure pad or something. Um, so hit apply and cancel. And I'm going to go ahead and run the map now. And I'll jump in game and show you guys basically what it does and hopefully yours acts the same way or similarly. Alright, here we are in Zally Clipping and this is the light that doesn't have a light switch and this is the light that does. Now let's go ahead and hit the button by pressing the use key and it turns off as you can see now the light prop doesn't which I should I could pro um, that's you need to change the skin which is a bit more complex but yeah it, it's, it still works just like how it should the model is the reason it does that anyways um, now with it on you might be going oh but it looks like the same well there is actually a differences because this one doesn't have light balances, balances and this one does. For example, um, the d roof is darker because it, it doesn't bounce off the floor, really. And the corners, I think, are a bit darker. It just is more has more of a dome effect. Rather than um, this, which has, uh, it, as you can see, it properly bounces. The uh, roof is completely, per is like, still bright. Stuff like that. And so... Yeah, that's really all I have for this tutorial today. Um, thanks for watching, and this is Ali, and I'm signing off.